This is the second time within a week where the Joe Rogan podcasts are inaccessible for people. And all the other podcasts work fine on Spotify. It's just the Joe Rogan's one that can't be accessed. And I'm sure that by the time you're seeing this video, it might even be remedied. So this is not why I'm even making this video. It's not breaking news or anything. It's just um, an interesting observation. Because there's a lot of people on Twitter with the hammer and sickle and the roses in their bios and the pronouns and whatnot who are usually saying, oh, we're, we're all for free speech. But a private company can do whatever it wants. Okay. So Spotify did whatever it wanted and that was a good enough. So they started pressuring Spotify in order to take down Joe Rogan. Uh, and pressuring a company is also fine. But now that this seems to be malicious and the free speech activists are happy. I thought you were for free speech, but... Well, there is no but. Like Spotify, the private company wants Joe Rogan. Why are you happy? Why are you happy that he's being taken down? And, of course, if, if they were to hack Spotify, if they were to take down Spotify and illegal activity, the same free speech warriors would also be happy. Because they don't believe in free speech. I don't think it's breaking news to anyone on the channel. It's just, like, interesting to see. It's like, oh, we're all for free speech, but... And, and even when the but doesn't happen, they're still not for free speech. Which goes to show, every time someone in 2022 says that they are for something but, it literally translates into that they are exactly against that thing. So why do they want Joe Rogan down? Because uh, a lot of publications, they're treating him like he's the next Trump. Uh, it's misinformation about the pandemic. Oh, yes, he's going to get you sick. He puts people into the ground. I don't think that's what it is. I think they're upset because, well, obviously he's popular. And I think uh, they're very upset and they're foaming at the mouth because he is saying things like... Direct quote, though, on his... Uh, you see it. Our teams are now embedded in governments around the world. That's actually what they wrote. Yes. Yeah. And the video is two minutes. I didn't play all of it. It's what he says. But what he's saying there sounds reasonable. Yeah. Figuring out on strategic ways to of end the lockdown does. easily. No, Would that not makes the, sense. Not the end of lockdown. No, no, no. Well, no. didn't he say that? Yeah. Keep in mind, Tony Blair is the one who's been advocating for vaccine passports, digital identification through COVID, and all of these measures. But didn't they say that about ending the lockdowns and keeping businesses? Once those measures are in place. Right, so he's even in the UK, his stance has been, yeah, we're going to get out of all it, but you have to have digital ID mm. and you have to have. So, so during and the war, then this is going to introduce the, t the, the social credit score system. Right, so the, what, all of that came from your question, which is, regardless of intention, how do people, how do people do that infiltration from within? It's not just Twitter. So back to the psychological operations. It's also embedding people in government who are subscribed to this agenda. Yeah? And the agenda of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum is the same as the agenda of Tony Blair in this regard. They call it on their own website, they call it the Great Reset. That's what they say themselves. Yeah, that's a bizarre thing to do, to yeah. openly. Why do you think they openly discuss it that way? And openly, because the Great Reset has always been this gigantic conspiracy theory yeah, yeah. among the online folks. Yeah. Like, this is all part of the Great Reset. Well, yeah. when he wrote a fucking book called The Great Reset, you're yeah. like, hey, man, yeah. shouldn't you be hiding this? And, and, and in 2017 at Harvard, he's saying, you know, we're going to basically, all of these world leaders will penetrate their cabinets with our young global leaders. He's open. At <laughs> he's open. Blair's open. During the Iraq war, Blair tried to bring in ID cards in Britain. He failed. Now he's back and he's trying to bring in digital ID during COVID. Right, so they're open about it. So this is going to be this never-ending process to slowly move the goalposts towards more and more authoritarianism, checkpoint society. It's all there. They, you, they how, told us this. We ha people have to realize this, right? This is important. Yeah. I think you managed to see in two minutes why the establishment really dislikes Joe Rogan. And this is due to the fact that one of the worst things that the corporate press is doing is not lying to people or manipulating the news. It's gatekeeping. They get to choose what information gets to be told to an audience and which information gets to be put aside. And for example, th this thing with the World Economic Forum, it's out in the open. Like you can go on their website, you can check all of this. This is what Majid Nawaz even showed. It's like, okay, they're, they're talking about this. It's public knowledge. But Joe Rogan now made it public to hundreds of millions of people.
and now it's in the conversation. It's within the overtone window. So politicians are having to answer questions that they find very uncomfortable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I listened to my colleague's speech. I had a constituent that wanted me to ask a question about outside interference to our democracy. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum, and he bragged how his subversive WWEF World Economic Forum has quoted infiltrated governments around the world. He said that his organization had penetrated more than half of Canada's cabinet. I was wondering, in the interest of transparency, could the member please name which cabinet ministers are on board with the WEF's agenda? My concern is the deputy. Uh, order, order, order. I, I know he was. I know the, uh, the member was in a, a really good, good question there, but the 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 audio is really, really bad, and the video is really, really bad as well. Um, and I and I and I apologize. I don't know if if the member. Okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's try again. The honourable the, the the honourable member for Timmins James Bay. Mr. Speaker, that member was promoting open disinformation that's not debate we have to call out disinformation uh, we're getting into debate again ah yes it's disinformation the thing that the left has no answer against besides censorship i mean how, how can you stop disinformation unless you censor it's an unstoppable force but censorship is the unmovable object so uh i'm curious is this disinformation hey um when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin, and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Pres of uh, Argentina, and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I would know that half of this cabinet or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world economy right. form. And that's true in Argentina too. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. That's true in Argentina as well. It's true in Argentina and uh, it's true in France now. Mm -hmm. I'm here with the president, with a young global leader. But what is important for me? Oh, is this information? Cut his microphone. Don't talk about it. Shh. Silence. So this is why they don't like Joe Rogan. He talks about things that shouldn't be talked about. He talks about things that should cut down the microphone. But unfortunately... It's now in the conversation. So why can't we find out how many cabinet members? I mean, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe I'm a big fan of the World Economic Forum. Maybe I want every single person to be from that World Economic Forum school. You know what? I think we need to make the World Economic Forum school public. I think every person has a right to study there. I think it should be operated by the government, paid by the taxpayer, and every single mom and every single child should be able to go to that school and study so they too have the chance of becoming a world leader or a great ceo that, that's my vote that that's what i want that's why i'm happy that this is finally in the conversation everyone has the right it's a human right to have a public education at the world economic forum what do you guys think let me know in the comment section and i will see you all there